With 26 years involved in the Soybean Festival, 17 years with the title of Executive Director, currently the First Year Initiative Coordinator at UTM, previously the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs at UTM, your Alderman and Martin, he is Mr. Soybean. This is Dr. David Belote. Welcome so much to Act Natural with John and Courtney. Yay. Great to be here. <laughs> We're really excited. We wanted to we wanted to ask you a ton of questions and just uh, really get into like your story with Soybean and then how you got started and, and who you are. Uh, you've been one of my favorite people in Martin ever since I got to Martin. Thank you. And uh, I'm just, I'm really excited to have you on the show. So um, what's your involvement with, with Soybean? Well, uh, it started, you know, at the very beginning, 26 years ago. Now, I, I was not one of the founders. I was not one of the the folks that was on the uh, on the grassroots of developing the festival, uh, uh, former Mayor Larry Taylor and Dr. Jerry Gresham of the Department of Agriculture there at UT Martin. Uh, Jerry was a wonderful man. He had some tremendous ideas, and and he came to Mayor Taylor one day and said, "You know what? This this community needs a festival," mm. and uh, the mayor agreed. So they set up, you know, uh, a task force to to see if if they could come up with a festival and they worked for a long time on, on, on what to call it and given that there was going to be a partnership between the city and the university uh, they they zeroed in on the soybean now mm. I have to admit when I first heard it was going to be the soybean I said to myself now how are we going to build a festival around the soybean but uh, in reality uh, the term the magic bean the magic started happening uh, it was about the time that the soybean was really getting a, a high level attention uh, in the news and in the agriculture world for the various products that, that comes from that little soybean. And, and uh, so, uh, you know, it, and it fits, it fits our, our, our culture here in Northwest Tennessee. I mean, we, we have an agrarian culture and, yeah, and uh, we have other culture too, but that, you know, that seems to be, be what we are and, uh, and it's um, a good way to celebrate it. So, yeah, so the, that's how the soybean, the Tennessee Soybean Festival name uh, came to be. And you got to really take your hats off to Mayor Taylor and, and, and Dr. Gresham. Dr. Gresham is, is, is deceased now, but he was a firecracker in getting things done in the community. And, um, you know, in, in reality, the, the, the structure and the framework that they established in that first year is, mm -hmm. is pretty close to the, a similar structure that we're still in today. It, it, it has some changes, but... Uh, uh, my involvement was uh, my work at UT Martin at that particular time. I was the director of campus recreation and also student activities, and we were we were really high level into concerning during that era of mm. UT Martin, and um, so we uh, um, they called on us to uh, bring a show to the festival. Now, that, now at that particular time. There was a downtown stage, and they were doing events on the downtown stage, you know, with, with local entertainers and so forth, but they wanted something big, and the best place to do it was at the university. Yeah. And so for a number of years, we, we, we did shows out there. Uh, some of the names have been uh, oh, <laughs> Tim McGraw. Uh, I didn't for know starters. that. That's great. And he was at, so when he came in, all the concerts were held at the university. Was it? We're at the university. We did it. Uh, we did it in two places. One was in the field house, and uh, okay, the field house, and also in the arena. In the arena. In itself. the arena. So we, you know, we've done a, a number of shows uh, in those facilities. So you were involved. You've been in soybean. This is your seventeenth. As, okay. yes. as the year. executive director. As the executive right. director. So, but soybean's been going on. This is the twenty sixth year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It will be. And you've been at the university this whole time. So how long have you been, like, participating in? So, I mean, when did you get to the university? I mean, how long have you been? Oh, in? I've been in, uh, at the university for over 40 years. 40 I, years. I started in, uh, I graduated from uh, UT Martin in 1976 and went to work for UT Martin that fall. No way. Yes. I love it. So your whole, wow. Yeah. That's a yeah. long time. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very attached to UT Martin. Wow. Uh, Goodness. I yeah. know that the school... I want to take a minute just to talk about UTM for a second. Okay. That school is so close to my heart, and it's not as close to my heart as it is to you because oh, I'm sure you graduated is. and then you you know started helping out with everything and taking a position there. But uh, ever since I first toured it, um, I guess in 2011 or 2010 or something, it was just such a, a special place. And that was before a lot of the renovations in the UC 
before any of the more recent renovations in the UC and before the renovations in the library and everything. And it was just such a, a warm campus, all those trees. And I don't think that people realize we have the most beautiful quad on any campus in Tennessee. Yeah. I think that our quad is just absolutely gorgeous. Well, and how, how have you seen it grow? Like, wh- oh wh- wh- what would you say is like the heyday? Like, you know, you think about in the Back past. Back in sometime. the day. Uh, y- you know, every time period or era has its, its, its good things. Uh, and I've been blessed to be in that environment. I thought about that, uh, you know, coming over today. And I, I, th- I anticipated we might talk about UT Martin a little bit. Uh, but, um, you know, for me personally, having been there for that long, and I started out as a hall director uh, there at UT Martin. That's great. And, uh, uh, and that was an eye-opening experience for me in regard to student services and uh, and being engaged with with students, college student, college age students, and I, I say that because I don't want to elaborate on it too much because we've got a lot to talk about. But yeah. uh, um, I found that 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 was a very special person for me uh, because you know you've got people coming to the institution that that have focus, that have drive. They kind of know what they want to do, and some of the folks don't know what they want to do, but they're seeking to find out what they want to do. So they're very driven people, right? even as young people. And, of course, the faculty and the staff, I mean, you know, it's just a perfect fit. They're very driven people. They mm-hmm. love what they do. They're good at what they do. They want to pass that information on. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so being a part of that has, has just been wonderful for me because I, I tell people, you know, when I work with students that I – I work with doctors, lawyers, teachers, uh, administrators, business people, and I'm working with them. That's exactly what they are, but I'm working with them while they're trying, while they're seeking yeah. to be those things. And it's just a, it's just a beautiful thing to be a part of, and to see a student come in as a first year student, and, and uh, you know, be a little bit wet behind the ears, <laughs> and and then learning the ropes, and then evolving into just people that are knowledgeable and ready to serve their communities. That, that That's a wonderful place to be. I love that so much. I do want to know, do you have a history of theater or performing at all? Because when I was there my freshman year and you came on the stage and you were telling us, I'll be honest, I'm not exactly sure what you were telling us because we were all wearing straw hats and it was a crazy time. A long time ago. <laughs> and it was, it was many moons ago, but I was like, I... Who is I, this guy? I felt a comfort yeah. because I was like, into theater and I wanted to pursue that um I was I came into school wanting to be a theater teacher and I saw um Mr. Doug and I told him I was like I'm gonna do theater and he said okay that's great are you gonna be a teacher and I was like yeah he's like why don't you pursue Spanish (laughs) and I said no I don't want to do Spanish he's like what about science and I was like no sir he's like math I'm like no I'm like I really want to do theater he's like what about English and I was like okay, I'll do English. And he's like, great. And then you're going to come in and you're going to be a part of the theater program, but you're going to have an English degree. And I was like, yeah, I can do that. That sounds great. And he said, awesome. And I came in and I did productions and it was a lot of fun. But I remember that initial meeting, we're all there with our straw hats. I've got my dad with me. I've got a big fat packet. And here you come in front of everyone and you just demand the attention. Really command the and space. And you made yeah. everyone feel so like comfortable. And I thought, if there are theatrical people like this here at the school, I'm going to be just fine. Like, that's how I felt. Like, if we're going to have administrative staff, like, with this sort of enthusiasm, then this is where I want to be. And so I just want to tell you thank you for that initial, like, come pow attitude because I know you got to do it every year. But you really came at it with an enthusiasm. Well, I, I appreciate that very much. Um, we, we were actually in a meeting yesterday with, with folks at work our first year initiative in our general studies class program and um you know it's a new year we, we're, we're a couple of weeks away from from our first year class coming in and we're, and we're working frantically to get ready but um uh, i tell people there is nothing more exciting than the beginning of a school year at, at, at ut martin i think that's true on, on any university campus there there's a special excitement there i mean even for for the uh, 
ones coming back, the sophomores. Mm -hmm. You know, there's something about coming back to school in the fall that's just uh, just really exciting. You know, rekindling friendships. You know, you've been away for the summertime, and then the, then the newness for the first year student of coming in and learning the ropes and all that. Yeah. I, you know, it, it's exciting for everybody. I, I I get caught up in it every year. I, I really do. I just think it's great following that momentum, that like energy of getting excited for something new and that first impression of like university and school and then sort of almost that same sort of energy with the town with soybean so i think right. there's like new things all the time but i love that momentum how it, it is just a momentum follows though. there from the university and just kind of goes to the downtown and then just boom like explodes it is great and it does and you know some of that has been quasi strategic there, <laughs> there's a a, a a very good partnership between the university and, and, and the city and and working together, I mean, there's a strong town gown uh, group uh, committee that that works on on such things, and and so uh, uh, some of that is strategic. You know, they did a survey not too long ago at UT Martin uh, where they surveyed alumni, and they asked them to list their most memorable activities and events, and. Uh, the Soybean Festival actually That's showed awesome. up in the top five. That's awesome. I love it. Yeah, it, it, it is awesome. And it, it is. So, you know, you, you kind of wonder if students are really coming down and enjoying the festival, and, and, and they are, and, and, and that's a part of it. Uh, uh, you know, part of that is, is for them. And, and, you know, the university and the Student Activities Council, they, they, have, they have taken a, a piece of that festival and, and, and made it work. Well, I've always wanted to connect the university more to the downtown. I really wanted to have not just the downtown, but the community around it. And I feel like experience inside of, like, education, but really specifically inside of UT Martin, because it is a it, it is a smaller school, it's growing. I mean, I mean, Dr. Carver is doing an amazing job. That the Isn't energy he? that he has, I mean, wow, he's really growing yes. this pride inside of being here. And I've always been very passionate about growing pride inside of being a part of Martin. You know, when someone asks, like any of our like baristas, like downstairs with Martin Coffee House, what's there to do in Martin? Like the biggest thing that they say is they they have to list off three things every time. You're not and, allowed to say yeah. nothing. Oh, there ain't nothing to do, <laughs> man. We, I mean, that's a big like um, like problem with me when someone says when they when they push down their town when they have that, and so I've always loved like like growing inside of taking taking the students and connecting them to a downtown, and I feel like that just makes their whole experience so much better because it is about community. And for me, looking at looking at we've not been here that long. I mean, we've been here six years or so. I've been here seven. You've been here seven. I've not been maybe five years for me, and we've only been involved in, in soybean really heavily for two years because of having Martin Coffee House here. We're in the top part of Martin Coffee House with our with our podcast. I've always thought like this is the greatest event for a community mm -hmm. and it feels like, and what, one of the reasons I want to talk to you so much is it feels like that that's the why, right? Like that's the motive. Um, I don't know. Like what, what events like showcase our community inside of soybean? Other events other than soybean? Yeah. No, no. Oh, like the, oh, like oh. the whole theater of soybean, like it's so long. Like how many days is soybean? Well, you know, when we started, it, it, it was a it was a three day event. Now it did have some auxiliary events, you know, that were in isolation that were a part of the festival, and, and still some of that happens mm -hmm. now. Uh, you know, it has grown over the years, uh, and um, we learned a lesson a few years back about the Labor Day weekend because we made an assumption that you know a lot of people leave the community on during the Labor Day weekend. Yeah. And uh, so we said we're going to experiment a little bit because, you know, it, it, was, a, it was during a time of recession mm -hmm. and there probably wasn't a whole lot of movement, not a whole lot of dollars to be spent on other recreational things. And so people were staying closer to home. Right. And we said during the fact, let's try an event. And we concocted this magical Martin Day. Oh, uh, now that that's a big deal now. It, yes. That's and, one of people's favorite days. And it's yeah. one of mine, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that that event has a story. And, and the story is when we, when we developed it, we were doing it in Festival Park uh, and not Virginia Weldon Park. And, and it, it was something that we could engage the community in. And, you know, and, and we wanted to use the super, superhero princess type yeah. theme. So we, we, we created little spaces with the different you know, Disney characters and other characters where children could migrate to those stations. And it was mostly crafts. There was some storytelling, story reading you know, and, and, and a few things like that. And we had it all planned out. It was going to be a beautiful event. We were doing it on the Saturday before Labor Day. 
and Saturday it, before Labor Day. And and it just rang so hard that day it, wa- oh, it washed no. us out. And we and, and we had a few contracted things that went along with activity, you know, a few kitty rides and so forth. And um, we went back uh, to the office after it was rained out, and we, we said to ourselves, you know, is there anything that we can salvage out of this? So we got on the phone and we started talking to some of the people that we had contracted with, some of the food vendors and some of the little ride people and so forth, and they were willing to come back you know, oh. and, and, and still honor the agreement on, on Labor Day because they were, really didn't have anything going on on Labor Day. So we were able to rebuild the event. And you know, it was an event that we thought, thought like we might have 200, 300 kids. And on that Labor Day, after we had rescheduled it, about 1,500 kids showed. Golly. Wow. <laughs> we go, wow. wow. And where was this now, what, at? They're still in Festival Park. And what okay. year, how long ago was it? Oh, gosh, the, this has been six years ago. So six, six or, years ago you had that. Six or seven years ago, yeah. Those kind of numbers come out. Yeah, I, it, uh, we just, we were flabbergasted. Wow. Mm-hmm. And, and we said, okay, <laughs> all right, maybe Labor Day, maybe a whole lot of people aren't coming along well. Uh, we decided the next year to do it in Virginia Welland Park for a lot of reasons. One, yeah. there's shade over there. Yeah. Uh, and it's a beautiful environment. It is. I mean, that's set up right now. Oh, my. You know. But down deep, uh, part of the motivation for that was um, not every child goes to Disney World. That's right. Yeah. And we can't recreate Disney World here. We can try. You can. Oh, I yeah. love we can, that. We can try, and <laughs> yeah. and and we and, and we worked hard. That's right. we, worked, we worked hard to do that, and that that event has just um, uh, grown. It's won awards too. It it, it has. Yeah. You know, we 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 have been awarded, and we belong to an association called the Southeast Festivals and Events and Fairs Association, and um, you know they have an awards competition, and and for the last four years now we have been honored. To, to win the best children's programming award, and of course the 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 nucleus of children's program is Magical Martin Day yeah. uh, for us. Now we do several other things for kids, and we got some good stuff coming up for kids uh, again for this this coming year. But uh, that's how that event started to morph and and evolve and and, and grow. And uh, but that's a grand event. We've had that's fun with beautiful. It. Like, I know. Like I'm like knowing, not trying to tear so, up over here. <laughs> so, thi- so think about like serving your community. Yeah. Knowing that a lot of the um, kids here might not, in, in reality, is not have a chance of experiencing something that magical, and then creating that magic inside of a, a town, and then mm-hmm. building a community around to support that. And for people of the town to say, "I'm going to take." on this challenge yeah. of bridging this and, I love and that. bringing Disney to you. Well, yeah. you know, or I, magic I, to for you. a five-year-old and a six-year-old, yeah. and they see someone like Suzanne Harper dressed up as, she a, does so as well. Snow White. Yes. Well, it's not Suzanne Harper to them. No, it's, no, it's not. not. Exactly. Uh, and that's yeah. just and all. And I feel it. Like I feel the magic in the air. Like it, I, I'm it all about. So good it does. Too. And it's Everyone's put together. Makeup and, and like costumes I, look so good. I just appreciate the commitment to the detail of it. Who you know, helps with the costumes and the makeup? Where well, does that you come know, from? That, you know that again. That as you do this over the years, you know there's your partnerships begin to evolve. Yeah. Um, Someone needs a shout we, out though. We, we're going to give them a shout out. <laughs> we, we partner with um, Simmons Bank on the costumes now oh this is why we 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 do this simmons bank which was city state bank for a number of years um they have sponsored the parade since the beginning of the festival oh and they've done it for a lot of years jeff caps uh, over there he's still working over there he has been the parade director for 20 he, this i didn't his, know that his now I, we honored him last year i knew he was involved but i didn't yeah. know for that long yeah though. yeah wow. we put him in the hall of fame last year for his work on the parade now if you've ever put together a parade and, and one that's this large it it's there's a lot involved there's a lot to it and they like they that. certainly do it but uh you know they too along with us you know we're looking to ways to spice it up and uh so, you know, when we came, when we wanted to do the superheroes and, and, and the princesses and so forth, you know, of course, the, obviously you need the best costumes you can get your hands on for the, for the best price. And they have, they, they finance, they buy the, co- they rent the costumes for us to use at Magical Martin Day, and then they will use them the next day during the parade. Okay. So that, 
So it's kind of a neat little. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good little exchange in it, and it, and uh, they're good. I mean, they've always been wonderful supporters of the festival, and and that's another thing about it. it I always say, if a community entity, whether it be a bank or a civic group or or, or some kind of church group, whatever. Um, it's great when they take a little piece of the festival and make it theirs. Yeah. And we, we have examples of that, uh, too. But what that does, it just, it, it, in reality, it takes the burden off of the, the basic committee that's doing a lot of things. And they take it, they own it, they do it, they run it. It's wonderful, and, and community is served. That's the perfect combination. That's so good. I feel like having businesses take a small piece of you know, the burden of doing that also gives a lot of personality to that as well. And it's really been really great to see all the local businesses down this area. And, and the majority of people really do like accept it and get involved, like set out like little chairs outside of their business, like open up their hours to being later, uh, sponsoring it. I know that WKNT was a big deal. Like they did all the, like the chairs or something. I know that it's just this big time where everybody comes together and just celebrates. And I just, I love the spirit of that. It makes it so much more community minded when it's literally built by the community. Yeah, and for and the it community. is like it's sponsored by the community. It's in the downtown like of that, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I don't know. I mean, do you think that I as far as like you've been a part of it for so long, like has there been a time like, um, are we at our peak of community engagement? And what do, what do you see for like the future? You know, like, I, 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 that's a good question. I, I, you know, as far as being at the peak of community involvement, uh, uh, we, we, we have a lot of involvement. Uh, but can you grow that? Uh, sure you can. And you folks are idea people. And um, uh, there's good ways of doing things, and they can be very successful for a period of years, and they can still they can be successful for <laughs> a long time. But, you know, I, uh, for me, uh, I kind of use the 80-20 the approach. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like doing the same things over and over again. So we 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 try to make at least 20% of the festival something different, something new. Yeah, uh, you do. Because, like, I remember all the different acts. Like, last year was that shark in a tank that was so cool. And it was parked over by the Savant Place, mm -hmm. the Old Electric Company. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I know that this year you we were changing that out, right? We're doing the... Well, actually, we're doing the Sea Lion Show. Now, the, shark, the sharks were great, uh, and that was a great show. This sea lion show, I, I don't want to put a nice guy down, but this sea lion show is next level. Oh gosh, is it ever? <laughs> it's next level, and I'm so excited for it yeah. to be here. Where, but where's that going to be at? By it's, the way? Actually, we're gonna we're gonna set it up in front of City Hall. That's great. There, okay. and uh, that's been a nice venue to do some of these yeah. novelty things uh, uh, over the years. And it's it's front and center. Everybody sees it, and this is a glorious setup. This is a magnificent. Uh, you, you're gonna think you're at the beach. As beautiful what? as this as this is. And well, you were saying that it took forever to like you were on their list. Well, they we were on their list because they're such a a, a wanted attraction. We we've been wanting this for about five years now and wow. and haven't been able to get it, and uh, it, it finally worked out, given our time frame that that, that they could come and and do it, and um, so um, uh, we're excited about it. I, when we booked it, the the agent said now. I'm not. I'm not blowing smoke here. You need to make sure that you have enough seating. We have. Yeah. Uh, we we have. So, but they're going to be here a week, and that constitutes to about 21 shows. So. Oh, that's so, great. So, okay, good. So people can come. You know, and multiple times a day. Say, I remember you telling yeah. us about that at yeah. the uh, NBA meeting. Oh, but, that's so. Good. But they, the show itself lasts about 30 minutes, and when I was working with them on on setting up the times, I was I was I was going to do it on on the hour during peak times and they asked us not to do that because um, when the show's over they encourage people to come down and you know get a little bit closer to the sea lions uh, ask questions you know that they, they have a an educational mission with their with their with their stuff too oh, so uh, so it, it, it's gonna be fun it, it, it we're so glad that we have it and that's a novelty event and we found out at least it's working right now that these novelty events that do multiple shows, um, it kind of serves as a glue to keep people in the in the downtown area. We used to suffer on the last Saturday uh, of keeping people downtown during, say, like the nine o'clock to about the four o'clock time. Right? Yeah. But uh, 
we have addressed that, and these novelty acts have, have helped us do that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we've we certainly we've added a few other things to keep people engaged and involved. People will come down down to the street fair, but you know you go to the street fair, you do it, done. you done it. Yeah. Uh, so what else is there to that I can do to have a have a good time with or my family can? So and, and, and some of these novelty acts, uh, for us they're 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 reasonably priced. Uh, for us, mm -hmm. you know we we can. We can work on getting sponsorship for, for those things, and sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But um, uh, they, and they're good shows, and they're quick. And they're, and they're set out nice. Like you go from so it's the back part, so it's like City Hall. That's right behind Martin Coffee House where we're at. And then you have the all the way by the Farmer's Market, which is across the street all the way down there. You have all the fair rides, and then you have something going on over in the park over here. So it's like this really nice, and it just takes over the downtown. It's well, it great. gets back to the... Um, of course, when I was little and growing up, you know, it was a joy to go to a Six Flags park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 of course, when you're little and doing that, it makes an impression on you. And, uh, you know, with our family, we've, we've been fortunate enough to go to Disney World a couple of times. And uh, so you see how that is spaced. And, uh, and if you can have a couple of good things in different areas – People aren't on top of one another. Right. You can enjoy it. And the trick is doing it multiple times mm -hmm. uh, during the day. And, and, and you know, it, it, it's just stuff we've learned over the years. In the future, too, like this new library that's coming across the street. So they tore down the old police station right before Soybean. It was so much fun watching the destruction of that. Like, <laughs> you know, I just, I want a bulldozer so bad. Wow. So Every like, time we pass one, John's like, I'm going to oh, have one of those one day. Just someday. So we're, we're watching that. And I know that they're leaving up their Reed Center um, for the for the musical acts to be there. Right. But then the new library is having a stage. So let's talk about the future. Like, is the future of Soybean perhaps going to be centered around the downtown or? Uh, there's a beautiful nuance in doing the festival downtown. Um, that's not to say that you could not have a, a wonderful festival somewhere else. And, of course, the obvious place to do a festival would be out at the Martin Recreation Complex. Right. right. And we almost went out there this year, uh, but circumstances changed downtown where we, we, we didn't have to move out there. Uh, but I already had it planned out, and you know, you've got more space. You you can create kind of a theme park. You can out there, and and um, uh, you know, a few years back, we did a little work on if you were going to do major music out there, how to do it, and we've got a plan on how how to get that done. But you know, back to the library. Um, the library is uh, is a, is a unique um, story. Uh, because it's, this is not going to be your libraries as we know it. Right. right. Some of that is obviously uh, going to be that way, but this this particular library is going to have so many things to offer. And when you're a small town like us and you're going to invest in something like that, then you've got to do the due diligence on asking yourself what other community need can we address at the same time. Okay. And so some good people sat down and started thinking so, of some things. And, you know, one of the things that we've been void of is, is meeting room space for the public. And um, uh, this building is going to satisfy some of that need because we, we, we've got some meeting room space that can be petitioned off to be smaller spaces or it can open up to a large space. And... Uh, Probably the space that's going to be in that library, and I know a lot of folks have not been in the University Center ballroom, uh, but it, it it's not quite as has the the square footage of that ballroom, but it's pretty close. Oh wow! So it's a nice it's a oh. nice that's size a room. A lot bigger than I thought. It's a wow. nice size room, but but how do you use that? Well, you use it in a Speakers. variety of ways yeah. uh, that you can use it. It's, it's a programming piece. Now, if you're not programming in it, how does the library use it? And they've got all kinds of classes and yeah. this and that going on where they need the space and they can petition the space, use a big space, cut it down, uh, do whatever they want uh, with that space. So that that was a piece. Now, we did a lot of work on, on going to libraries uh, throughout Tennessee and Nashville and in and, and a few other places that had uh, – we went to Bellevue and we've been to uh, other places in Nashville and – 
new libraries, new structures, and oh gosh, I'm, they are magnificent. And we want ours to be magnificent too. Uh, but they too have taken this holistic look at, you know, what what is what is a contemporary library, and, mm-hmm. it, and a contemporary library has a lot of what was in historical libraries, but then it has so well, much it, more. Well, it serves a modern community Absolutely. problem. It's a, it's a new community right. space because right. there's new things that people are using it for. And I was talking to Dr. Nick Dunnigan about that, and it was just really neat to see how, you know, he really viewed the designation of that space to serve a void, like a gap that's there in the community. And I've always thought that that was a really beautiful thing because it's a meeting place. It's mm-hmm. what inspired a lot of, like, Martin Coffee House, like, mm-hmm. we want a neutral space where, where, like, things can happen in. But I think about that in the context of, of like soybean too. And it's like all this, all this community is like merger of the university and here and businesses all together. And I think about um, if it, I think it still is the plan to have like a stage um, at least accessible inside of the design uh, for the, for the big stage downtown. Well, the, you know, part of the thinking was, you know, we're going to continue to do the festival downtown. Why are we year after year after year having to rent Big money there. Stages, rent, uh, technical equipment, sound mm-hmm. and lights uh, to do what we need to do, uh, you know, at that festival. And and uh, so the idea, w- and again, I mean, this just didn't uh, sit down and think of it. it it's, I'm, 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 you talked about theater and arts mm-hmm. previously, and I, I don't know if we'll get back that or not, but when I travel, um, I, I go into other communities and I want to see what they have. Yeah. And uh, amenities for their citizens. That's mm-hmm. that, that that's right. what I'm looking at. And I, I have a son that lives out in Utah or, or, or if we happen to go to Florida or down in Alabama or Mississippi or whatever to some of the coastal places and so forth, you know, I'm going to find their amphitheater and I'm going to go take a look at it. Exactly. I love that. Yeah. And uh, so, um, and some of those are just magnificent yeah. uh, pieces of work. Now, some of them see eight, 10,000 people. Some of them seat a thousand people and they're just as useful and just as wonderful. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, so, you know, our stage uh, that we're going to put out there at the library is, is going to be large enough to handle a contemporary event, okay. music event, but that's just the beginning. That stage is going to be light and sound ready. So really it's plug in and go. No. And and just think of this the thing. This is the venue. The think of the things you can do year yes. around uh, there. Now, this, this is a, a stage that it's 60 feet by 48 feet that has a magnificent, beautiful roof on it. And so you've got a covering. You don't mm-hmm. have to do music and events and so forth out there. You can do programs out there. You can be on the stage. You can have dinners out there you can this have dances beautiful. on that stage oh you can, i am so excited about so, this you know so it, it 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 it's just like that meeting room is limitless as to what you can program in yeah. it right the stage becomes the same way i'm i'm waiting for the first marriage that's going to be on that stage we'll shoot the wedding <laughs> <laughs> Paul's right there, there you go we'll shoot the wedding what <laughs> Plug in and go. <laughs> no, this is great. This is this is the center stage for the future of Martin. This is okay, the center stage where, where everything where can the, happen. The Christmas stuff is gonna now have think like it, think about everything we talked about in the last podcast about soybean and then the future of it and what it and what it could be and what it is, and think about the community having a space to grow, to be a music venue, to do all that. This is a blank canvas where that can happen. At. That's so cool. You to know, have when we, that. When, as an example, when we do the community band in the summertime, and thank God for John Ulrich and those wonderful He's people. He's fantastic. We need to get him on the podcast. Yes, you do. Podcast. He's you need wonderful. To, you need to get him here. But, uh, you know, that event, um, you know, it, events behind the scenes, there's a lot of work to them. And, you know, they have to bring their equipment, set it up. Uh, we have to bring out the sound. Sometimes we have to bring out the lights, you know. Are putting a stage out there that really doesn't need to be out there because it's out there for a month and it gets beat on by the weather mm. yeah. uh, and so forth. But it, it works, you know, it works, and it's not the most attractive thing in the world either. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, now, you know, we're, we're just a few years away from from uh, having that, what I call an amenity to program with yeah. and, to be, and to do some very special things with. Yeah. So uh, to me, that that's exceedingly exciting. I want to say I think that is such a gift that 
the people who make the decisions about the uh, new Martin Library, and I don't know if you're on that board or not, um, but those people who make those decisions, he's Maybe. like, yeah, he's like, yeah, I'm who on that knows? board. Uh, but the people that make those decisions that they decided to offer that to our town and to say, hey, we're going to make our Tennessee Soybean Festival even better, and we're going to offer this space here. I think it's it's just like well, it shows the motto. It I mean, does, it's, it's, but it's just like taking a part of the festival. I'm going to take the parade side. I'm going to offer you the stage. Yeah. Like that is just you're preparing such a the gift. stage for what the future can be for Martin. Literally, I could just building it out and plugging it in. I'm I, so, I'm I'm just, so I know that I'm really excited. I need to tone it down a little bit, but okay. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I view our town as like growing into Stars Hollow. I don't know if you watch Gilmore Girls, Dr. Below. <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> but you should. You should definitely watch Gilmore Girls. There's some great characters there. There's a great love for the town. And I have always walked into Martin, Tennessee, starting seven or eight years ago, saying, this is my little Stars Hollow town. And literally like these decisions to invest in our community and put up new lights and put up you know work on that um uh walking trail, walking trail. brian brian Brown. Brown memorial greenway and yeah. working on that it's just such soundscape. a gift to everyone yeah jason um, stout doing everything yeah, over working there on that soundscape. i'm just so proud of everyone that they're saying martin is worth it, it and deserves it the yeah. people are worth having this space and this development and it's just such a gift i think i'm just yeah. i'm just really grateful and i just want other people to know that the people in charge and um artists and uh professors are investing and i think that's very nice yes let's get into the lineup of soybeans okay, yes, and yes, what yes. to expect this year what are we getting into in well we've talked about some of the novelty we did not let me let me mention yeah, let's one get of the rundown. novelty yeah yeah and, and, w and we can put that to sleep for a while uh, another activity is we're bringing in a zoo oh my goodness and it's really? called eudora farms and it's a beautiful setup uh they need a pretty good fit footprint on it they need a space of about 160 feet by 70 feet um. but uh they they bring in about 40 to 50 uh exotic animals some of them are domestic animals of course uh and, and it is such a magnificent setup and, and and their their care for the animals and so forth but along with that and this is this is an open exhibit so whenever we open for the day the exhibit will be open throughout the day until we close down the festival that day so it's an ongoing thing but they they offer parakeet shows and camel rides and, and you know pony rides and, and, and other things. You can feed the animals, uh, and th their setup is is first class. I mean, the, we've got a first class sea lion setup coming in, but this uh, uh, this too, and because of what it is, is a first class setup, and um, it's going to be great. Now that. At, that will be with us for seven days. So the same amount of time as the sea lion show. Yes, too. So that, that is correct. So and uh, where will it be? There'll be well, so many people downtown. Uh, you know, um, I know we're very close to the festival, and we we have identified three different sites. We see Camille in the background, <laughs> just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're still working on those uh, on those sites. All three sites will accommodate, uh, but we are. Um, we don't own one of the sites. The city, one of the sites is not city property. Okay. Can I ask a question about that? Yeah. So there is a uh, right across from, from the park where the new, what is it the Pilots Club that made that big new construction happen with the, the playground? Wins. Playground, yeah. Okay. That was amazing. So like right across the street from that, there's a house. And it was so great to see that it go away. It was dilapidated and it, so it needed to go in it. Is did. that a space that perhaps can be used? Is that on the... John, you're so perceptive. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering. I wonder no, why they're okay, clearing you that out. Understand? This is all we talk about. We uh, walk around. We t we go on go walks there. like this three times here. a day. We talk about Martin Coffee House, and we talk about soybean, and we talk about the city of Martin yeah. and just dreams. And so we have already had this conversation. So there's a chance that <laughs> well, the people that own that property have been very gracious to the city of Martin because we have used the side yard there for a number of years. Uh, with the uh, barbecue cook-off oh, and, right. and a few other things too. So they've been very gracious in allowing the city to use the property. And uh, so, you know, we, we, we're still moving in that direction. It, you know, um, at, at, I mean, that yellow house in its day and time served a lot of good purposes and it, you know, it just got old. 
Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it is gone now. I it mean, is it, very it gone. It is gone, and, and you know that becomes a very valuable space uh, yeah. right there. And if we can make the proper arrangements, maybe we can utilize that space in a positive way for the festival. So, Sea Lion Show, massive right. zoo coming. Eudora Farms, right. which is going to be decided where that's located Major in the coming deal. days. Right. Um, as far as like other acts like that, I know like we have Magical Martin Day, we have so much did going I, on. Did I mention the incredible magic Chinese acrobats? No. Oh. I love Chinese How'd you acrobats. Forget that? I'm so excited. <laughs> There's just so much happening. Well, you know, we uh, that that's a theatrical presentation yeah. right there. And uh, so we've always had two stages at the Tennessee Soybean Festival, and we usually put it down in the fire station parking lot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's right down there, but uh, we're going to move that up to more in the middle of the festival. We're going to put that on the south side of the Reed Center, uh, and we're creating okay. a, a very nice performance venue right there. And they'll come in on the Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of the festival, and they will do um, three shows on Thursday and Friday, and they'll do four shows on Saturday. Golly. Now, the, most of these novelty shows, they last about 30 minutes apiece. That's great. Uh, and, uh, but uh, this has... All the pomp and fanfare and color. Uh, we did similar shows on campus several, several years ago. I think they called them the Chinese. <laughs> they got all kinds of names, but uh, these are acrobat. The, the, the things that they do are phenomenal, and it's a beautiful show. I mean, the colors, the pomp and fanfare. Uh, you know, it is mesmerizing. Yeah. Uh, so it, it it'll be a lot of fun. So since we have that stage, we're also using that stage as um, when we can, uh, to feature some some of the local talent and so forth. That'll uh, be great. On, oh, cool. On that stage too, but we've got a full lineup on on that stage uh, once once we get started. So you know, you, it's here, use it. Right. And right. that that's kind of been been the attitude there. We've got a, you know, this is this is exciting because it's it's we've got more space to put some things. Yeah. That, that we didn't have before, and, you know. Where the old city hall lot, and I know we want to talk about entertainment, but the old city hall lot now that that is flat, um, we're going to make larger and improve upon our general store that we that oh, we that had last year. Oh, that was a big year. deal. That that little um yeah it's oh yeah. yes, and it featured uh Rachel did Melton. It feature yeah, Rachel Melton's a lot of art in there. Art, yeah, yeah. That was so cool. I I still have some um, soy lotion. Yeah, I think that would be a big deal. I could make some money, And there were some, some free too. items in there just to, like, raise awareness. And, right. they, and they sold um, T-shirts and another thing. And like how to that. navigate, too, because it's like there's a lot it going on. It was a good little spot to, to check in. I think someone said, is this the library? Because <laughs> it was right there. <laughs> Maybe they were joking. You, you know, <laughs> that, 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 that question, that at, at one time... The Martin Library was in a structure not much larger than that, and, that, and I, if funny. I'm not mistaken, it, it, it sat where the where the post office sits now. Oh, uh, yeah. it, it was right there, and it, it was just a little old white building. That's great, and, the, and that was the library. So I, who knows? But uh, 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 the general store will be a little bit bigger this year. We're getting a little bit bigger structure, uh, and, and that's a whole other story of of people being real good to the festival. You know. We don't get to keep that structure, but uh, we, our good friend Lynn Harper here in town has connections. He has a tow truck company. Yes, he does, and he is a he is the ultimate community servant, oh. uh, without a doubt. And he's into into so many things. Now he's the one. I, I know I'm diverting here, but that's okay. Now that we're talking about Lynn, just a little bit, I'll get back to the general store. But uh, he is the one that has organized the, the cancer car bash for I knew for that. all of these years. Yeah. And, uh, that every year. is such an such an amazing um, feature. It's always emotional. It is. It's very powerful. It's very powerful. And whether you go ahead and take a bash at the car, or whether you watch and just kind of have a moment for yourself, you're just you're just transported. And it's a very very powerful sight to see. If you haven't seen the cancer car bash. Make sure you go by and, and look at it um, and keep these people in your in your thoughts while you're there. It's, it's just a very reverent time. So he organizes that every he time. He does. He does. From the get-go, he, he's the one that's done that. Now, he'll be the first to tell you there's a lot of good people that help him. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yes, now back to the general store and Lynn. 
Lynn has a connection. He has a friend up in Mayfield, Kentucky, I believe, that builds these structures. Oh, like Eagle Buildings or something? Yeah. Like those little yeah. pre-made things? Yeah, and uh, so th- um, we learned last year that we needed a little bit bigger building, and they're actually building us a bigger building. Now, they'll bring, oh, cool. a, they'll bring a new building to us, and that building that we're getting is, is basically already sold. Oh. But we get to use it for a week. Nice. And, and you know, we get to put our general store in there. And, uh, it's good uh, advertising for them too. It is, it is, and that's how that's how it's set up. Uh, but uh, y- you know, we, we, we're going to air condition it this year. It's going to be our information center. It's going to be our first aid station. Uh, so you know, that building is going to going to do a lot for us. Uh, it, you know, as we move forward with with that particular concept. So, so that that's a good thing. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to talk about music. Okay. There we go. Uh, and, and really, you know, we, it's. Main stage, which is the festival park stage, the WKT stage. Uh, and uh, so we're going to get started on uh, Sunday evening, September the 1st. September 1. And we've got uh, The Return coming. That is a Beatles tribute band. Ooh, I'm excited. Oh, and they are, we, I've done this act a few times over the years, and they are great. They're professional. They really make it happen. And, uh, and, and our, our community has enjoyed them over the years, and that's kind of why we're bringing them back. Uh, what's different this time is that we used to just do the 1964 version of the show, mm-hmm. uh, and we're going to do that. They're going to do two sets, and one of they're going to be the early Beatles, the mm-hmm. 1964 version, and then they're going to be the Sgt. Pepper Beatles. So they're going to take an intermission. Oh, wow. They're going to change costume. That's they're cool. going to come back and do, you know, the music from the late 60s into the into the 70s. So they've got the Sgt. Pepper's piece. Now we're going to have a little fun with that because in the in the 1964 piece, we're going to do a little twist contest when they sing "Twist and Shout." Twist and shout. So we're <laughs> we're looking for participation for in the twist contest. There y'all you go, look, Courtney. Y'all look like a fine couple. Let's do it. Couple right there. Sarah McCormick would love that. And we're hoping that uh, folks will uh, kind of dress in the 70s, late 60s, 70s attire and okay. have a little fun with that too. So we're gonna have a little costume contest too, which we'll give away some good prizes. And we'll and get so, our staff. So we're that. gonna have fun. You know, we're gonna have fun with that. And then we're gonna do the fireworks show downtown right after that event. Mm-hmm. That'll be a 360 fireworks show. Uh, we'll do it uh, from the Reed Center. Uh, we'll do it from. Um, um, on the on the Lennel Street building side, we've we've got a designated building there that the good folks let us use. Uh, we'll shoot from the library roof, and then we'll set up uh, some some scaffolding on the east side to to be able. So it'll be a kind of a three sixty thing. On the first, all this on the first. On the first, all this will be choreographed. We are oh, just to already. music and, and ready to go. Hitting it right. Those from fireworks the are awesome. I know it's always so intense. It's always like last year was like, what's going on? This is so cool because it's all around you. Like it's in its all around you. Oh, like, I it's know. Amazing. It's incredible. I want to say this in the most um, grateful and careful way possible. God. Okay, some uh-huh. people in the South just get really excited about fireworks. And some people get a little too excited about fireworks. That's me. I'm the too and, excited part. But, like, <laughs> okay, some people <laughs> get a little dangerous with the fireworks. And well, it's like it's this thing where it's like, you know, I'm, I don't know. It's. It's a nostalgic thing, right? But what I love is that we just take that as a personality of the town. And we're like, fireworks, light them up. Let's have a festival. And we're just, it's, it gets yeah, crazy. I, that's I like, love it. I love that about Martin. I Martin's know. like, you know what better way to make this go over the top? 360 fireworks show. It's like, boom. you thought we were going to have the Beatles? We got a contest. You want something else? We got 360 fireworks. That's it's what I love It's just over the it. top. I just love it. What's well, a big personality trait of like soybean? That's like what it, I'm it's, trying to it's say. It's always done to like, how can we make it a little bit better? How can we do a little bit more? How can we be more engaging? I just love that. You know, in, our, in our festival committee, as we work on, 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 the, on the event itself, we, we bring to the table the term wow. Are we making it a wow? Now, mm-hmm. not, now wow can have many, many definitions, you know. There's the mesmerizing wow. There is the educational wow. Uh, there, you know. So, you know, what's going to put this over the top, right. so to speak? And right. and that's a conscious effort to do that. It doesn't happen every time, but uh, you know, it, it is a thought press process to to see, you know, if we're going to set it up here, how can we make it as wonderful as possible? So we start off the day, start off the whole week, boom. The Beatles. Right. What we got next? Uh, 
Now, the next day is, is, is Labor Day, and we got a lot going on downtown, and I'm, I'm supposed to stay specific to music. That is Magical Martin Day and everything that comes with it. Magical Martin Day at Virginia Weldon Park will be from 3 to 7 in the evening, but we start at 10, uh, and there are a host of other things going on. We've got the Touch a Truck activity That's back. That's a big one. It is. Kids love that. The last year, like Touch a Truck, like we were, our, that was almost that was our busiest day. Yeah, we have no business wise. Of all the acts, Touch a Truck, it was number one in sales for us. That's great. We were like, oh my gosh, they were all over the place. Mm -hmm. So that was we, really neat. Well, that that's coming. We've got uh, we have the uh, we, we will do the sidewalk chalk competition, uh, uh, you know, during that morning and afternoon. Uh, we've got a magic show that's going to be on the Big Bean stage that afternoon. We we had we experimented with the Makers Fair last year. We had vendors coming in who make different crafts and so forth we had about 10 vendors and we're looking to have about 10 vendors this this year too where they share their craft and so forth that's cool so that will be uh in the streets also uh the optimist club will do their bicycle rodeo oh. they have a traditional spot to do that and it's out at the martin parks and recreation we've tried to bring it downtown but uh, they've got a layout out there that's it's just big. perfect and and uh so we're hoping a lot of kids can, can participate in that. It's That's a really, great. really fun activity, good activity for kids. So there are things going on that morning prior to Magical Martin Day. Then we'll do Magical Martin Day, and we've, we've got a lot of fun stuff. That's just, I can't even begin to verbalize the magic that's going to happen that day. Uh, and all of the wonderful people that are contributing to that. But then uh, that evening, uh, we're going to have um, Mike Snyder and his string band perform. Uh, that evening, and he'll he'll be on the big stage uh, doing that. Now, I hope folks are familiar with Mike Snyder. Mike Snyder is from Gleason, Tennessee. He is one of our West Tennessee treasures. He is in the country. He is in the Grand Ole Opry Hall of Fame. Wow. He performs regularly up there. He is the his claim to fame was that he was the national banjo champion, uh, and cool. uh, he has become the mini pearl of uh, the Grand Ole Opry. Wow. And that's quite a statement to make. And, yeah. and uh, so Mike, Mike, Mike's just right here with us. And um, his show, it's, it's just as much musical as it is comedic. I love that. Uh, so he, he's, he's a wonderful performer. And, and uh, I, I know our local folks will appreciate it. Every time he comes, we, we, we have a very good turnout for, for Mike. And uh, so we're looking forward to Mike coming. Then on Tuesday, Tuesday is a, you know, a, an, another big day. That's parade day. And then after the parade, uh, we're going to do Seven Bridges, which is what we consider the premier um, Eagles tribute band. And cool. so we're going to have a lot of good Eagles music uh, that evening uh, on the main stage with, with them. Wednesday is Faith and Community Night, and um, that's sponsored by the Martin Ministerial Alliance, and they really work hard and do a good job of putting that together. I mean, we have a community meal. Uh, we have the the health fair there and Dr. Danny Donaldson helps us coordinate that and a lot of good services are showcased at that particular time um, and uh, the program will be and we're, we're proud to have them we've got the the Bethel Renaissance Choir oh they're really good aren't they good oh, we heard them at the great. Dixie uh, yeah. they were up there recently they go up there a lot I think yes um, wow so they would be performing and for what I understand they're gonna have the full choir there and I mean, they're just not only a local choir; they perform all over the country. They've been yeah. tours of, you know, throughout the the world, and and uh, uh, we're glad to have them. It's going to be a great, great evening, a great show in that respect. So, th that's our Wednesday music. Thursday is UT Martin Student Night, and I'm, when I say that, I need to make sure that I say our partnership is with the Student Activities Council and UT Martin on that particular night, and. Um, uh, there will be 1,000 UT Martin students that will that will get in at no cost. All, right. uh, all they got to do is pick up their ticket. Now that is a ticketed event for 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 others. Now why do you, why do UT Martin students not have to pay for that? Well, indirectly they are paying for it with their activities fee, and that's why they get in. Yeah, right. that makes uh, sense. So, uh, uh, but uh, we've got um, um, Walker Hayes and Runaway June. Runaway June spent this summer touring with Carrie Underwood. Uh, they have some charted music out right now. Uh, Walker Hayes is uh, another contemporary um, country artist, and he too has a 
has has had a number one hit, and, and you know, and, and a few other things too. So uh, he's got a unique country style. It's a little bit more. Um, how can I put it? Uh, there's a lot of contemporary country. But his is, has a little, how can I put it, a little street sound to it. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I, I like it. I like yeah. it a lot. And That's cool. So it's going to be a good night on, on that evening. Uh, Thursday is, um, is the Oak Ridge Boys. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, of course, they are, they are what they are. They're, Infamous. They are, they are a legend. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're legendary performers, and they will give a magnificent performance. Actually, John, back a few years ago, they did the first – ever concert in the Elam Center Arena. Really? Yes. Wow. Well, that's kind of neat that to have a, them come back on the... That was about 1980, I'd say, that when that was, is, is when they did that. And, uh, I hope they remember us. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they will or not, but oh, uh, no telling how many shows Gosh. they've done since then. Uh, but uh, they were gracious then, and I'm sure they'll be gracious too. And, uh, you know, that particular event, you know, it... it, it you know, it, it's for everybody, but, uh, you know, it's the Oak Ridge Boys. They've been around for a while, and probably, you know, it's going to be for a crowd of you know, 40, 45 on up. Uh, be a lot of nostalgia. I yeah, think. a lot of nostalgia there So with, with that one. And then uh, I'm excited about the Saturday night show because I have I have been a Sticks fan uh, ever since they formed. And I've always thought that Dennis DeYoung was one of the greatest vocalists that ever – ever walked on stage That's and awesome. and uh so sticks and dennis de young will be with us on on saturday evening so that that's our our big big lineup uh, you know thursday friday and saturday are ticketed events and uh um uh, and, and, and you know information on tickets can be found on the website and, and boy the way you can buy tickets these days it's easy where can They're they like, go I, I think it ranges from 15 to 25 is that it right does. Yes. okay yeah, 25. That's not bad at all. You get them on the... the. Okay, you can go to the Tennessee Soybean Festival.com. I'm making this up. TN Soybean Festival. Dot com or dot org? And you can go there and you can you can buy your tickets. So you can go to... TN Soybean Festival.org. Get your tickets there. Get your tickets there. Do it there. that way. Well, I want to talk about two more things. Okay. How can this community, how can we all get more involved inside of... Soybean Festival for the 26th year. I think you, your, your last number there um, is key, is um, 26. Now, that's a lot of festivals. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we don't want the festival to become old hat. And, and I think when things start feeling or getting old, then maybe your participation wanes a little bit. Yeah. So... Uh, it, it's our job to keep it fresh and moving and 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 fun. Keep that uh, new twenty percent. Right, talking keep, about. keep that in there. But the the special quality of the festival, and uh, we've we've got a vehicle that that brings people together once a year. And uh, yeah. I'm not real sure that we do that any other time collectively. And uh, so it's an opportunity there to. Uh, um, come out and, and, and be with your brothers and sisters that you live with here in the community. And, and so creating an environment to do that, I think, is, is very special. So um, as, as long as we maintain that, that thought then, and work toward it, then you know, I think we're doing a good thing. And I, you still want to spice it up and, and do new things. And, you know, the library, we talked about the library. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a stage on the library, but my goodness gracious, Look what you can do with the festival on the inside of that library during yeah. festival time. So that's some of the newness in it. Um, and uh, the, anybody that's walked the streets of Martin in the last 10 years has seen some real progress. Mm-hmm. Man, is it growing. And, and you know, uh, hallelujah for that. Uh, and there's taken a lot of good people, entrepreneurial-type people, that have, have made some of these things happen and, uh, and it looks like it is happening. When your buildings are full in your downtown area and, 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 and they're uh, thriving, and, uh, you know, that just enhances it for everybody. And hopefully that library, when it gets in, can, can enhance. What about you? I mean, how long are, do you plan on being a part of uh, leading this? I've always said with anything is, is you know, if, I, if, uh, if it becomes work, <laughs> then uh, uh, 
then it might be time to do something else. Now, this soybean festival is work, but it's a labor of love sure. uh, because the, you, know, you see the richness of it as it's, as it's e- unfolding and it's working. And you, you work to make it work. Uh, so, uh, uh, and I hope that we're doing a good job. You know, the, the day that we're not doing a good job, we need to reevaluate. Mm-hmm. And create something else, whatever that might be, and that might be somebody else creating those things. But uh, um, what do you see for the future? I mean, what what do you think? I mean, I know we've we've set the stage for, and I know that we know the motive behind it. I know that there's community around it. But what do you what do you foresee in the you know soybean the next ten years? I see soybean beyond the week. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's because of the amenity that that stage might provide. Oh, okay, I, you know, I don't know. It's all speculation up in the air but you think about it sometimes i mean you could you could have a soybean summer uh with 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 that particular amenity out there to to program off of it and and uh so you know there's a lot of things you can you can do with that but uh that's just one thought right there uh enlarging the space we used to do a lot of things out there at the at the martin parks and rec um and we still do, and we still do a lot of things out there. But that—that's a nice venue that I'm not real sure we've tapped into completely to do some special things with that space. Mm-hmm. As far as the festival goes, um, there's always UT Martin uh, uh, and, and the talent that's out there. You know, we're we're working on an event right now. We have we haven't finished it yet, I and mean, we might not finish it for this year, but it might be for the next. But it's it's the Cattlemen's Association student group out there. They've got some novel ideas for children and animals and horses. Uh, That's you know, cool. and, and yeah. Taking them out on the farm, and we're working on that right now. That's one thing about the festival, that, that uh, a lot of good ideas come up at the last second. And the mm-hmm. beauty of the festival is, well, we'll do it next, we'll do it the next time around. And right. mm-hmm. So you've done a lot of work on that. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that one's going to make it this particular time, but it, you know, it's got enough good stuff to it where, you know, it could, it, it, it can make it. So, um, and, uh, you know, we have used the UT Martin campus, uh, uh, for various things for the festival, you know, one idea may might be to get back into the arena mm. and, and, and do some things during festival time. Um, and, um, and that, you know, we, uh, again, we, we know how to do events in the Elam Center. You've been doing them for a yeah. really long time. And we've, and we've got what it takes to do it. And, you yeah. know, it took us a while to get there. You know, we have the right staging. We have the right power. We have the right elect- electrical leads. We have... We have we know what to do and how to do it in there, and, it, and it's just a question of doing it. Mm-hmm. So it, it, again, we've we've traveled down that path. So you you know you can do events in there if if, if folks are willing and you can work it out. So uh, you know the, the we've kind of toyed with with um, the last three years is it is a local community, and mm-hmm. we never want that localness to escape the Tennessee Soybean Festival. Mm-hmm. But soybeans get beyond Martin, Tennessee, and they get into Northwest Tennessee and beyond. This is, you know, so we have done some things strategically to, to be in a regional event. Right. Uh, and we have people in European countries that come to the United States in the, in the summer months for their vacations, and they're going on websites and developing their tour schedule. And many and many of them are coming to the Tennessee Soybean Festival as a part of their American yeah. visit. So that that's fun, you know. It that's is. fun when that happens. Mm-hmm. Cool to happens see too, shop. and yeah. yeah, yeah. So that 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 is really cool. So, um, yeah, there, there's ways to grow it. I mean, one of these days we probably need to have a real, real sit down and say, okay, you know, where do we want to go with this thing? Yeah, and uh, and we're almost there. I'd say. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say so too. I love the idea of having a soybean month or all summer. Um, and it's, it's so neat to see it divided into, you know, you have your downtown area, you have your arena area, you have your over there by the, uh, the park area. What's the name of that? The Qantas Club? 
the big it's, it's the big rec the park. Virginia Walden Park no 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 like the one that has the oh, lake the rec park yeah the rec yep. park so it's like you have these three big venues almost and you can like spread everything out sure. and, and it's so neat to like almost like pull all those strings together from the university to the rec park to the downtown right and this coordinate in this coordinated way of, of providing a tennis absolutely service. you know you've got you've got a lake out there well the idea is to okay we've got a lake out there what can we do out there that's going to bring people out have about a good a time jet with. ski Th- show there you go I mean, <laughs> that, 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 that's how happen. that's how this stuff evolves and uh, uh, it, 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 is it possible to do something out there with that particular lake? Probably. Jet ski 2020. And so, yes. The, so, so um, uh, but it, it takes that kind of sitting down and thinking with, you know, with folks that want to be creative and, and, then, and then seeing if it'll work. Well, I'm excited. And thank you so much for, like, being a part of this, like, podcast. We we're, were so enthusiastic to talk to you about everything. Um, I just... I know that your heart is in the community and I know that whatever like way that you direct it, whether it is stages downtown and Martin or, or stages not like, I know that it's really thinking about the community first instead of it being, let's make this thing global, you know, cause it is global because it's local and exactly. because it's a community. Exactly. We, we can't lose our, I, uh, my favorite thing to do. There's a lot of them at the Tennessee soybean festival, but my youngest son who is now 22 years old, um, you know, he's been coming to the Soybean Festival all of his life. And one of the things that we do every festival is we go to the American Legion and we eat pancakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, and, that, and that's been a standard for us. We yeah. do it every year. We plan on doing it. Uh, and it's a great environment, great pancakes, good people. And we do it. And that's how we get our day started on that Saturday. And then we, then we take off. So that if we lose that, yeah, it's not worth it. Wow. Oh, I love this. I love that. Well, if you want to know more about Tennessee Soybean Festival, it's all over Facebook. It's on the website. We're going to be, be promoting it quite a bit on our own website, agnaturalpodcast.com. We'll have links to everything. Thank you guys so much for listening. It's been great. Thank you again for coming on the show. Thank you. This has been wonderful. Awesome.